What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and we're back again. Today, we're gonna get into one of the more popular things on my TikTok, and that's gonna be checking out my custom builds for the add-on boards. I'm also gonna go over a really simple how to uh, actually create your own add-on board using an ESP32 and some software. As always, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we're growing so fast. Turn on notifications to be kept in the loop. Uh, we also have a community Discord. Thank you so much to Styx for building it for me and to Dex for boosting it to the moon. We are super psyched to have that. It's been a lot of fun. There's actually a lot of people in there already, so check it out too. All right, so that's enough of me. Let's get into it. Today we're going to be checking out some of the custom builds I've made for my Flipper Zero. It seems to be one of the more popular things on my TikTok, so I figured I'd bring it on over here. Don't mind my really distracting reflection in there. Effectively, both of these cards are more or less the same thing. We've got an NRF24, we've got the ESP32, those are both the same on both cards. Uh, this one has a OLED ESP32 on it. It's a Helltech board. It's actually a LoRa board. It's got a lot of really cool features on there that I'm not using. And this one has a screen. Uh, it's a TFT screen. So we can actually do a lot of really cool stuff on that. It's a touch screen and it is what Just Call Me Coco uses in his Marauder builds. So I'm just gonna move this guy out of the way and show you what I'm calling my Yeti board. Mark one. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this into my flipper. It might be a little bit hard to see. Let me be as awkward as possible in this. Here we go. Get it lined up. Here we are. And then I'm just gonna restart Flipper. Upside down. Is this the right one? Nope. Nope. There we go. Restart Flipper. Ah, oh, Flipper Zero. He's on the couch. You can't see it because of the glare, but he's on the couch. We hate Couch Guy. I'm gonna restart him again because I hate Couch Guy. Okay, cool. Back to one of my animations. So. I know it's impossible to see. The OLED screen is kind of really, really bright and it never wants to focus. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that and I'm doing my best here. This is running Marauder, just like the other board, but this one doesn't actually have its own screen. Because of that, we have to use everything through the Flipper's actual application for it. If you are gonna use this, all you have to do is download the FAP file and you can use the Marauder app on your Flipper itself with an ESP32, like we're gonna show you in just a little bit. For now, this thing's really doing all it does best, which is look cool. So we're gonna move over to our next board. Now, this big chungus is the Yet E board Mark II. Let's see if we can get this plugged in. There we go. And this is running the same application the other one is, which is just, just call me Coco's Wi-Fi Marauder. However, now it's got its own screen and that's where all the fun happens. Now, instead of having the flipper itself controlling it, this is actually completely on its own. It's it's running its own applications. It's doing all its own things. We're gonna use the touch screen to navigate. So we can click on Wi-Fi and you can see the attacks and the sniffers. There's so many tools in here. Yeah, everything's upside down for me. So be uh, give me a little bit of slack with the steering here. It's upside down. I can't see anything, but you can see how much more utility this program has. It's absolutely crazy. You can even update it itself on your Wi-Fi system. Ah. It's absolutely crazy. It's really, really cool. It's fun to play with. I highly recommend if you want to try something, this is a great thing to try. It's a little ambitious, I'll give it that. However, you can build it without the NRF24, which makes it a little bit easier to wire. Also, you can build it on a breadboard, which makes it a lot easier to kind of figure out how to wire everything. I highly recommend using the breadboard before you go ahead and try to actually, you know, solder everything together. I didn't do it for my first few boards. However, this one in particular, it took me a little bit of figuring out to get the wiring right. So I would not recommend kind of just jumping in there and trying to wire this whole thing without prototyping at all. Let me pull this out of the way and then we're gonna take a look at the back so we can see the wiring on both of these. This board I get a ton of flack for because on the back of this board, the wiring is protected by an ungodly amount of hot glue. It's something that's worked for me, however, it's not for everybody. This is actually more or less pocket friendly. I can just kind of dump this thing in my pocket and it'll be more or less safe, or at least the wiring will be. I've had this thing for a while and it still works perfectly. I know it's super ugly and, uh, you know, it's not for everybody. However, if it works, it works. Yoink. Now for this guy, this guy's got a little bit less 
sturdiness and a little bit less hot glue. However, some people seem to think that's uh, a lot more desirable. You can see on here, the wiring is a little bit, well, it's still pretty ugly. However, the soldering is a lot better. There's not as much burn on this one. I burned that crap out of the other board, so I got flux, I got a better soldering iron, you know, upgraded the whole setup. The results seem to look a lot better. I'm pretty happy with it. The one thing that is a bummer is this SD card is huge. I literally might rip the entire SD card slot off this and install a micro SD slot, which would be a lot nicer looking. I don't like how this hangs off. I think it looks terrible. If I do a Mark III Yet E board, which I definitely will, it's gonna have two ESP32s on it and it will have a micro SD, not a full size ugly honking SD on it. Now that you've seen my boards, let's go show you how you can make your own super simple Wi-Fi board. All right. Now that you've seen the stuff that I've made, it's time for you to make something cool. So we're gonna pop on over to Skeleton Man's GitHub and we're gonna take a look at some of the files that are on here. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and download the repo. This has the flasher and all the files that we need for the moment. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. Now we're gonna scroll down here and get some information about how to install this. You're gonna to have to install Git for Windows, which is pretty easy. There's instructions right here. Also, you're gonna need the driver for the ESP32. Super easy to do, literally just go down here, click on the universal driver, and then just download that and install that. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do that twice. So we're gonna go back to the repo. From here, we're simply gonna open our zipped file. We're gonna extract that guy right on over here. Bam! And we're gonna open the folder destination. Yeah, there we go. And there we go, and copy this. As we've done time and time before, we're gonna hop over into PowerShell now. PowerShell, we're gonna go to the folder location. So I always just do this, move this over. We're gonna go here and just copy the folder location and then go to set location, quote, paste, there we go. And now we're in there, so we can start following the instruction. First things first, step zero, not optional. We're gonna copy this and we're just gonna go ahead and run that in PowerShell. I think I've already done this before, so it's a little faster. However, the first time you run that, it may take a few seconds, but hey, you know, not a big deal. Now, just as before, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our ESP32 holding the boot button. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that just in case. All right, so this is my ESP32. Just got this little guy right here. I doubt it's gonna focus easily. Come on, buddy. Oh, there we go. And as you can see, there's the boot button. And we're gonna go ahead and take our USB cable, hold the boot button, and plug that sucker in. There we go. Red light. Wow, you can't see that. There's so much light on here, but trust me, there's a red light on here. Now we're just gonna pop on over to the desktop. We're gonna install the firmware for it, and then basically it's gonna work. It's super simple. Again, I can't state how easy it is to work with ESP32s. I love these little chipsets. They're super useful. I made one into a GIF player. I know it's GIF, not GIF. I wanna call it GIF, but can't. And yeah, you can literally do so many things with them. I highly recommend playing with them. The S3, the newest version, sounds like it's got even more cool stuff. So check them out. And we're back. We're gonna go ahead and get to step four because we just did step three. Copy that guy. We're gonna go ahead and paste that right on in here. And here we go. It's gonna go ahead and download all of the firmware files that we need so we can install them now. Again, as we said, it's an ESP32 room, which is the first version of it. So we're gonna go ahead and press the number four and then enter. Hello? There we go. And that's just gonna go ahead and do its thing. It's not super fast. Again, it's one of those things where we're probably going to make a fast montage. So let's go. After these messages. We'll be right back. Well, that was fun, but we're all set now. All we have to do now is hook this thing up to the Flipper Zero and you've got your own add-on board. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Back to face cam. So this is my ESP32 right here. I'm gonna take some Dunlop wires. So these are really simple wires. It's got a male end and a female end pretty much. We're gonna plug in those four wires to our ESP32 on the 3v3, the ground, and then the RX0 and TX0. So we've got four wires, that's all you need. Literally just four wires. We're gonna take a look at our Flipper Zero right here. You'll notice, again, focusing lights. It's got RX TX and it's got 3v3 in ground. We're gonna go ahead and plug the 3v3 and the ground in correspondingly to the, the ports. One, two. Bend the heck out of your connector. We've got a light on now, it's hard to see. And then we're gonna plug TX into RX, RX into TX. 
It sounds simple, everybody wants to do it wrong. All right, and this is what it looks like when it's done. It's a hot mess. However, it is a working card. So this is working, this is doing Marauder just like all my cards are. However, it's just a little uglier. I'll post a picture for one of my, my first Reddit posts. Actually, it was my first Reddit post about Flipper Zero stuff, and you can see what how I did mine. But for now, let's switch over to the desktop so we can see exactly how this is working and we can show you that it's working just like a normal Wi-Fi dev board. Back to good old desktop. Gonna go ahead and open up QFlipper. Or we can spell right, there we go. Ooh, update, ah, we'll do that later, cancel. You can go ahead and see I've got the screen on here with one of my Goku animations. Looks better on the actual flipper, if I do say so myself. We're gonna go to Applications, GPIO. Gonna go back down to Wi-Fi Marauder. And then we're gonna make sure it works, so we're gonna go ahead and scan IPs. With any luck, this will actually start finding stuff. Takes a second, there we go. It's finding our access points. Super cool, I know. It's really easy. This is why whenever people are asking questions about making their own boards, I always recommend start with an ESP32. It's literally the easiest thing in the world to make a Wi-Fi board yourself. That's really all there is to it. All you gotta do is download Skeleton Man script, run his instructions, starting with step zero. Don't forget step zero. I actually was recording this earlier, forgot step zero, and it didn't work. So that cost me a little bit of time because I was being a dummy. So don't be a dummy. Thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate all the views and all the feedback I've gotten from you. It means the world to me. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to turn on notifications so you can see all the new content that I'm bringing up. I'm trying to make content as quickly as I can. Uh, I'm also trying to make sure that I'm releasing quality content because that's what you all deserve. Definitely hit up our Discord. It's growing so fast. Having a lot of fun in there. I did a premiere for the last video I did. We had a live watch party. It was really, really fun. So come in and check out the Discord. Thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you next time.